He based it off a cross that was used by surfers and bikers in the 1960s. So he brought it into the office one day and his bosses Jay and Rich said that that logo looks way too Nazi. What's up guys, my name is Levi, this is Shred Shop, connecting you to skateboarding, and we are here to talk to you about 14 things you didn't know about independent trucks. We are going to cover everything from the start, the logo, the different stages, the controversies, and much, much more. Early days. In the early days of skateboarding, the parts for our board weren't actually usually made by skateboard companies. Decks were made by furniture companies, trucks were made by sporting good companies that made like bikes or rollerblades or things like that. Skateboard specific trucks didn't come around until 1975 because they needed to be wider and stronger than roller skate trucks. There's actually a quote by Lance Mountain that says, Tracker made trucks. And if you were a skateboarder, you rode trackers, there was nothing else. A company called Bennett came out with a new truck that changed the way that skateboard trucks turned. The problem with those trucks though was that the base plates were made of plastic, so they broke all the time. Then comes in independent trucks. They decided to make a truck that had Bennett's geometry, which helped turn the trucks, and the durability of tracker trucks and combine them into one thing, the start. Four guys, Richard Novak, Jay Sherman, Fausto Botello, and Eric Swenson. These guys joined forces and they founded independent skateboard trucks. In the late 70s, skateboarding was changing. Tricks were changing all the time. There was new riders, new parks, new styles, and the stage one independent truck was released May 23rd, 1978. As we said before, they combined the geometry of a Bennett and the durability of a tracker the designs were hinted at by Steve Olson in a skateboarder magazine, Who's Hot, interview. In 1978, Indy put out their first ad with Ricky Blackheart doing a backside roll-in over the coping into a pool. Indy was more than just a brand, it was a mentality. Indy represented the North California that was kind of the rugged, biker, badass kind of vibe, where tracker trucks was more SoCal and it was flower board shorts, surfer influenced, early team. Early on, Indy realized that if they wanted to compete with Gawling, Tracker, and Bennett, they needed to create a really good skateboard team. Luckily, the trucks were a really good product, so people wanted to ride them, so building a team was no problem. In the beginning days, Fosto would walk up to dudes at skate competitions, hand them a pair of Indy trucks with a $100 bill rolled up in them, and that's how he would offer people to ride for their team. The early team consisted of Ricky Blackheart, Steve Olson, Bobby Valdez, Brad Bowman, Steve Alba, Howard Hood, Henry Hester, and John Hudson. By the mid 80s, their team exploded and they added names like Dwayne Peters, Tony Alva, Steve Rocco, Christian Osoy, Jay Adams, Steve Caballero, Lance Mountain, Tommy Guerrero, Steve Stedham, Rodney Mullen, Doug Saladino, and many more. They also had riders of many disciplines, downhill, slalom, bowl, Freestyle, they had it all. The logo. The original Indy logo was designed by skateboard Hall of Fame artist Jim Phillips. You'd recognize his art on vintage skate graphics from pros such as Grasso, Hasoy, Salba, Natus, and many more. In his book, The Art of Jim Phillips, he says that he created the Indy logo based off the Iron Cross. He based it off a cross that was used by surfers and bikers in the 1960s. Jim used that cross by rounding off the edges and tweaking it a little bit to give it the look it has today. So he brought it into the office one day and his bosses Jay and Rich said that that logo looks way too Nazi. After they rejected the logo, Jim went back to the drawing board. Not long after that, he found a Time magazine with Pope John Paul on the cover and on his vestments or on his robe, he actually had a cross that was so similar and so he brought it into the office. When he brought it into the office, Jay and Rich said, if the Pope wears it, it must be okay. And that's how the independent cross was born, kids. Logo controversy. In 2019, Indy came under fire by some people saying, you need to change your logo, it's too close to the Iron Cross. Which although the Iron Cross was not designed by the Nazis, it was used by the Nazis in World War II as a point of symbolism. In 2020, the topic has been brought up again, and there's rumors that Indy has been having meetings on whether or not they need to change their logo. What's your guys' thoughts on this? Do you think the Indy logo is too close to the Iron Cross, or do you think they don't need to change anything at all? The ads. Over the years, if you got an indie ad, it was like having the cover of Thrasher or any skateboard magazine. It was such an honor to get one. Indy's also famous for having a bunch of different ads that actually didn't involve skateboarding. Hamburgers, pizza, 
tampons. Thrasher magazine. At that same time, Eric Swenson and Fausto Vitello decided that they needed to put out a magazine that promoted NorCal skateboarding and independent trucks. 1981, Thrasher magazine is born, and Skate and Destroy is their motto. Not long after Transworld Skateboarding Magazine was born, they decided to come out and promote SoCal skateboarding, and their motto was the opposite of Skate and Create. Henry Rollins. At one point, there's a photo of Henry Rollins from Black Flag skateboarding, and he's riding indies. They bothered him trying to get a quote for the magazine, but he didn't really know what to say, so all he said was, yeah, I ride him. The stages. In July 1978, Indy comes out with a stage one. As we said, it has the durability of a tracker with the turning radius of a Bennett. A year later, stage two comes out with a new, lower, removable kingpin. In 1982, they come out with stage three with a beefed up pivot cup area. They also widen and strengthen the yoke area of the hangar. You might recognize the independent stage three as that's what ace trucks are based off of today. In 1984, stage four comes out and they get strengthened and beefed up. In 1986, they come out with Stage 5. It's the first hollow body indie, and it's designed by Lance Mountain and Steve Caballero. In 1991, they released a Stage 6. It's slightly shorter than a Stage 5 and reduced some material for lighter weight. Stage 7 comes out in 1993. In 1997, Stage 8 comes out with a new base plate and a new kingpin design. In 2003, they come out with a Stage 9 truck with new, faster turning geometry. In 2009, Stage 10 comes out with a beefed up base plate and a lower geometry. In 2012, the trucks that we know and love today come out for stage 11. When designing these trucks, they tried to make the turning radius so close to the stage five, which has been most requested. The stage 11s that we know today, you can get in three different styles. The standard, which is the classic that we know and love from Indy. The hollows, which has a forged base plate, hollow axle, and a hollow kingpin, making for a lighter truck. And the titanium, which has a forged base plate, titanium axle, and a hollow chromoly kingpin. You can get them from 7.5 inches wide to 10 inches wide. There's rumors of new truck designs coming down the pipes of new redesigned base plates and inverted kingpins. Vintage Indies. There's a crazy cult-like following for vintage Indies. There's people that will go dig up old trucks from the 80s and sell them online for hundreds of dollars. There's some riders on the Indy team that only ride vintage Indies. In a Jankum interview, Gilbert Crockett and Jeff Rowley both said they only ride old Indies. Copycats. If you look closely, there's actually a couple other companies that actually bite Indy's turning geometry almost exactly to build off their trucks. We're not going to name those truck companies here, but there are certain companies that actually brag about the fact that they ripped off their design fully from Indy. Modern Indy team. Today the Indy team is still super stacked. Their team today includes people like Tony Hawk, Andrew Reynolds, Evan Smith, Brian Anderson, Lance Mountain, John Cardiel, Jeff Rowley, Rowan Zarilla, Spanky, Danny Way, Steve Caballero, and Pedro Barros and a ton more. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Levi, this is Shred Shop on YouTube, connecting you to skateboarding. What brand do you want us to do next? Let us know in the comments below. We're doing a brand new 14 things you didn't know about certain brand every other Saturday. Sending kids off the wall and medical bills into the wild blue yonder, sometimes all at once. 25 years ago, it started out as one more of those California fads. Now it's the sleeper gift of Christmas 87.